The surprise diagnosis of bone cancer, especially in children, can be followed with years of treatment and recovery. For patients like Trevor Benka, the disease can have a lifelong effect. I was having leg pain, and my parents thought it was growing pains. Uh, I was 12, and I was active, running around, and we went, my dad and I went on a hike. And by the end of the hike, I was dragging my leg behind me, and he said, sorry, Nance, which is my, my mom, that we should probably take him to the, to the doctors. They took x-rays, and it took a while, so my mom and I were kind of wondering what was going on. The, doc, the physician came in, and I remember he had an ashen look on his face. His mood was very different from what it was before, and he solemnly said, well, we found a shadow on the bone. And I said, what's that mean? He's like, well, there's two things. It could be, it could be an infection of the bone, or it could be cancer, but I think it's cancer. And then we were referred down, uh, down here to Detroit uh, to a specialist, and I went to, Dr. Mott was just finishing his fellowship in orthopedic oncology at that time, a bone surgeon that deals specifically with bone tumors. Trevor is, a, uh, is, is now a young man. When I met him, he was a, an early uh, teenager who um, had a uh, distal femoral osteosarcoma, which is one of the uh, highly malignant type of bone cancers that we deal with. Initially, um, I had four sessions of chemotherapy, which lasted 96 hours each, um, and that happened every three weeks. Um, after that, I had um, limb salvage surgery. Dr. Mott gave me three choices. I decided to go with the uh, uh, prosthesis. So after three sessions of chemotherapy, I had uh, surgery where they replaced the distal part of my femur and the proximal part of my tibia and my knee joint, uh, which is basically a door hinge. And after that, I had, again, uh, three more sessions of chemotherapy. So in total, my, my treatment was about a year. After his recovery, Trevor's experience led him to medical school and eventually back to the physician who saved his life. So I've known him for several years now, but what I've also gotten to see is him mature from a, a teenager who was you know, struggling with the treatment side to a person who then went to college. And then to the point that he was uh, entering uh, uh, medical school and residency. And at some of his visits, we would talk uh, sometimes about residency. And he said, you know, I'm going to medical school. And now he's an, an orthopedic surgery resident. I knew I wanted to go into the medical profession uh, before I was diagnosed. Um, after my diagnosis, uh, I saw the ability Dr. Mott had to not only save my life, but give me my life back. And I was able to ride my bike across the country a couple times and continue in the activities that I loved to do. And I said that I wanted to do that for people in my same situation. After weeks of chemotherapy and a difficult surgery, another young bone cancer patient, Jamal Davis, returns after his surgery, eager to move past his disease. So, you want to hear the good news yeah. or the bad news? Good. <laughs> I'm just teasing, it's all good news. <laughs> Mar Mar the margins are clear, there's no tumor at the margins, which is fantastic. Okay. And not only that, the pathologist is having a hard time finding any tumor at all. So it's, very it's very, very rewarding to see uh, these patients uh, get over the cancer, survive, and, and stay functional. And we're pretty successful you know, around the country in cancer centers doing that, fortunately. Um, and, uh, you know, it makes it all worthwhile. There's a lot of anxiety and, and fear on the part of the family and, uh, you know, some anxiety on the part of the treating physicians. But when they come back to see you year after year and doing pretty well, it certainly makes it all worthwhile. Uh, Dr. Percy did an excellent job on my surgery. I want to thank him. I want to thank Dr. T. Jawani, thank Holly, and all the staff who helped me get through this. I don't think I would have got through without the doctors and all the support they gave me. Everybody was great. Dr. Parson explained to us from beginning to end, you know, what could possibly happen and I am so satisfied with the results. My baby is great, yes. Like Jamal, Don Billinghurst has had a challenging but successful recovery. Although physicians will continue to screen him for cancer, he can now focus on the next phase of his life, a life after cancer. I came out a changed person. I came home and I told everybody, I'm a changed man. I really am. My outlook on life, um, family and 
my friends that have been there for me through this whole thing and helped me in so many different ways. And my wife has gone through so many things. Um, I'm just so much more appreciative of those around me and what we've built together over 16 years. I don't think there's an orthopedic oncologist who forgets any of those people. I think that you remember those people um, every day. I don't know uh, how I was blessed to uh, have somebody like Dr. Mott. He saved, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he saved my life, saved my leg. The man went to extraordinary lengths to save uh, my leg. Uh, very caring. Uh, Irene was like a, a, a third mother to me. They've been a really good family to work with. And I appreciate how they feel about me. And uh, it's just been wonderful knowing them. I'm sorry that he had to go through what he's gone through, but they've been a good family to work with. You get very attached to these people because they, they you see them a lot. They become uh, more than just patients. They become kind of part of an extended family, if you will. And in my mind, there's no way that you can just leave it clinically behind. Although bone cancer is extremely rare, if you or your children are experiencing unexplained pain, it's important to see your physician. You should also get regular physical exams. To learn more, go to henryford.com. You can also make an appointment. We'll be right back with scenes from the next Minds of Medicine. On the next Minds of Medicine, training the surgeon of the future inside one of the country's largest and most technologically advanced simulation centers. Everyone expects, uh, when they think about training for airline pilots, that they've been through everything you can imagine on a simulator before they're allowed to actually fly you on an airplane. This is really adding is sort of the medical equivalent. What doctors learn here might just save your life. We'll also follow a patient undergoing robotic surgery for a liver tumor getting the very latest treatment from one of the world's greatest surgeons. Watch Minds of Medicine Saturday at 7, only on 7. To get a free copy of this program, call 1-800-604-0200.